Hello friends, this video on Wave Optics Part 29 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till Part 28 before going ahead with Part 29. Let us look at the first method that is polarization by Polaroids. Now before that, let me tell you how do we denote polarized light and unpolarized light. When we talk about polarized light, when we talk about unpolarized light, we denote them in this way. This represents polar direction by, by I mean the plane of vibration parallel to the plane, and this represents perpend in the perpendicular direction. So this represents, this shows that there is a plane of vibration parallel to the plane and there is a plane of vibration perpendicular. So this is the, denote, this is the way to denote unpolarized light. And how do we denote polarized light? Polarized light can be either this or this. That means polarized light can either be in the perpendicular plane or it can be in the parallel plane. So this is how we denote polarized light right so with this basic information let us start to understand let us start understanding polarization by polaroids so let us consider a polaroid so what is a polaroid polaroid are polarizing materials consisting of long chain of molecules aligned in a particular direction so basically polaroids are materials I and mean, you can get it in the form of thin sheets as well as you can get it in the form of um, some, some quartz metal and things like that. So what is it? They basically have molecules where all the molecules are arranged in such a way that they are all aligned in a particular direction. So every polaroid has a pass axis. So what is that pass axis? That pass axis, you can imagine that as a gate of the Polaroid. So it will allow light to pass only through the pass axis of a Polaroid. Let us suppose this is a Polaroid. There will be a thin opening in the middle. So that means this is the door of the Polaroid. You can only pass along this. So that means if there is a light which is vertical, it can pass through this. But if there is a light, along this direction, this will not allow this to cross, right? So a polarizer can have horizontal pass axis. It can also have a vertical pass axis, right? So the, this pass axis of the polaroid determines how the light will pass through it. So what happens when an unpolarized light is passed through a polarized polar, polaroid, it gets polarized. How? Here, if you look at this, this is unpolarized light because it has plane of vibration in all possible directions, right? So if you look at it, it has in it is vibrating in all different planes at different instant of time. Now, as soon as it passes through this Polaroid, let us suppose if this is the slit of the Polaroid, it will only allow those vibration which is along this direction. So that means the remaining vibration will not be allowed to pass through the Polaroid. So only these vibrations will pass and as a result, the light will be polarized right are you understanding the concept if there is an opening along this direction it will only allow the light which is oscillating in this direction it will not allow light which is oscillating in this fashion or this fashion to pass through this opening so the light which is oscillating along this direction can only pass through this polaroid right as a result the light becomes the unpolarized light becomes polarized So there was a series of experiments which was performed using Polaroids to study the effects of polarization. So the first one was, the first part of the experiment was polarization by a single Polaroid. What happened was that the same thing as I mentioned before, one Polaroid was kept and it was found that the light which was emitted, which came after coming, uh, crossing the Polaroid was a polarized light. And it was observed that the intensity is almost half. That is because initially there were so many light waves, right? Now almost half of them have been cut off. So only the remaining half is allowed to enter. And as a result, the intensity is almost half. Because half of them has been cut off. They are not allowed to enter. 
So that was one thing that was observed. And the next observation was that rotation of the polaroid has no effect on the intensity of transmitted polarized light. That's because even if you rotate the polaroid, suppose initially the axis is, the pass axis is along this direction. If you rotate it, it will be somewhat like this. If you rotate it further, it will be somewhat like this. But at any orientation, at any of these orientations, it will allow only half of the light to pass through it. That's because in the light, in, in this unpolarized light, you have equal amount of light in all possible directions. So whichever direction you uh, rotate the polaroid, the same amount of light will be allowed to pass through. Let us suppose you have, you, you take this example to understand this concept. Let us suppose you have three, let us suppose you have total 30 chocolates. Or let us suppose you have got total 30 pens, right? Out of which you have 10 Reynolds, you have got 10 pencils, and you have got 10 markers. You have 10 pens, 10 pencils, and 10 markers. Now, let us suppose there is a box which will tell you what it will it will accept there is a box which will accept either pen or pencil or marker it will not accept any two varieties right so if the box says that it will allow pens in that case you pour all the 10 pens so what is the result 10 so how many objects are there inside the box 10 if the box says it will accept only pencils, you will pour all the 10 pencils. So how many objects are there inside the box? 10. If it says it will accept only marker, you will put all the markers. So how many objects are there? 10. So that means irrespective of whether you are putting pen, pencil or marker, the number of objects inside this box is always 10. That is because each of these objects are present in equal number. All of them are present in 10 numbers, right? Similarly here, the different orient, there are many different orientation, but all of them are present in equal amount. So whichever may be the direction of the polaroid, in that particular direction, same amount of light is there. So every time as the amount of light which comes out of the polarizer or the intensity of light which comes out of the polaroid remains the same. Sometimes it will allow the vertically polarized light to pass through. Sometimes it will allow the, uh, the perpendicular polarized light to pass through. So the direction might change but the intensity of the light will remain the same. So in the second part of the experiment two polar polaroids were used. So earlier there was only one polaroid. Now what was done? Another polarized was introduced in between. So this is my new polaroid PP. This was my previous polaroid. So previously what was happening when the light was coming, plain polarized light was coming out. And when the when P1 was rotated, there was no effect, right? That was what was observed in the first experiment. In the second experiment, it was observed that when another polaroid P2 was placed in between the unpolarized light and the previous polarizer, it was seen that the intensity of the light is almost halved after P2. That is quite obvious, right? Because unpolarized light is coming. It is passing through this polarizer. So this polarizer will again allow only any one plane of vibration. So as a result, you get a linearly polarized light. And at this point of time itself, the intensity is halved, right? Now what happens when this polarized light now enters the second polarizer? Now there are different possibilities. Now it depends on the orientation of the axis of this polarizer. Now if this polarizer P1 is having its pass axis along the same direction as P2, then what will happen? It will allow the light to come out of it. So here the intensity was half and here also the intensity will remain the same. Suppose here intensity was I, then here also the intensity would be I because both of them are their axes are along the same plane. So whatever waves P, P2 allowed to pass, the same waves P1 will also allow to pass. So as a result, the intensity will remain the same here. But in case, if 
the two axes are not oriented in the same direction. That is, if I rotate polaroid P1, it will have effect on intensity of the transmitted light. Now, suppose if I rotate P1 in such a way that its axis is perpendicular to the axis of P2. That means, let us suppose if axis of P1 is like this and axis of P2, P axis of P2 is like this and P1 is like this. If axis of P2 is like this, it will allow the waves which are oscillating like this. Now when these waves will reach these polarizer, this will not allow because the waves are oscillating like this and you have the opening like this. So that means this will not allow any wave and as a result the net intensity will be zero. So this is the scenario. In this case the net intensity is I but in this case the net intensity is zero. It will not transmit any light. So here axis of P1 is parallel to P2 in this case and in this case axis of P1 is perpendicular to the axis of P2. So this means that as we keep rotating P1 the intensity of the transmitted light keeps changing and the intensity is minimum when P1 is perpendicular to P2 that is transmitted intensity is zero when pass axis of P1 is perpendicular to P2 and it is maximum when pass axis of P1 is parallel to P2. So this was a very important uh, result. I mean this experiment 1 and experiment 2 together helped us to study the polarization by polaroids and using these experiments it was concluded that intensity of the polarized light varies with the angle between the pass axis of the two polaroids right and that is absolutely correct intensity here in the previous slide we have just discussed about the two extreme cases one is when the angle between the two pass axis is zero and the other is the angle between the two pass axis is 90 degree but even in between them the intensity will keep varying right so that means it was something like this intensity is zero when theta is 90 degree and intensity is maximum when theta is equal to zero degree right what happens So now the question is, we are talking about two extreme conditions when theta is 0 and theta is 90. This shows that as the angle theta changes from 0 to 90, as the angle increases from 0 to 90, the intensity keeps decreasing. So what happens when the angle between the pass axis is some angle theta between 0 and 90 degrees? So how does it vary with theta? So for that came up this famous law called the Malus law. Malus gave a law because he experimentally found that the intensity varies as cosine square of theta where theta is the angle between the, pole, between the pass axis of the two polaroids. Where what is I0? I0 was the intensity of polarized light after passing through P1 and I was the new intensity after rotation. I means before rotation the intensity was I0 and after rotation the intensity is I. So here I0 and I both are the intensity of the final transmitted light. That means let us suppose this was unpolarized light, right? It was passed through one polaroid, then it became polarized. then it was again passed through another polaroid. So the final intensity which we get, this final intensity before rotation was I0 and after it was rotated is I. So then I is related to I0 as I is equal to I0 cos square theta. So this is how intensity varies with the orientation of the polaroid. So this was one method by which we can polarize light. So in this way we can polarize the unpolarized light. So, but why do Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.